Hi, I'm Sunil Lamana, the Community Website Manager here at Infoblox. Our community website is a place where our customers can post discussion group questions and read thought leadership blogs about networking and security. The community site can be found at community.infoblox.com. So welcome to this community-sponsored webinar. Our guest speaker is Bob Rose, Principal Product Marketing Manager at Infoblox. Bob is responsible for marketing our DNS, DHCP, and IP address management solutions. Hey, Sunil, great to be here. Uh, great to spend some time with you today. Thanks for being here, Bob. We appreciate it. So today, Bob's going to walk us through an online flipping book. Uh, now, this flipping book is a cool tool. It's packed full of valuable information about our solutions. Uh, when Bob flips the pages in the book, it makes the same sounds as flipping pages in a book or a magazine, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, listen, to, listen for it. So um, Bob, as we talked earlier, uh, corporate networks are going to be very complex. There are multiple deployment architectures. There's on-prem, in the cloud, hybrid. So what value does Infobox offer to address all this complexity? You know, uh, Sunil, that's such a great question. We we talked to so many different organizations. Um, as you mentioned, there's so many different deployment architectures. You mentioned on-prem data center, um, virtualization, private cloud, um, you know, hybrid multi-cloud. There's so many different um, deployment options out there for organizations. And, and when you add on top of that, the plethora of, of applications of uh, facilities that you have to manage, the data, the servers, the people, the data centers, you know, everybody's working from home now, there's there's applications, um, of course, you know, devices, there's so many devices, you've got third party providers, there's a lot of complexity to manage. And one of the key issues that we focus on is how do we solve this solution, um, that this challenge for complexity and, and really modernize the network enterprise to be able to, to tackle some of these big challenges. And so what we wanted to do was to actually pull together um, a, a document that looks at what are the key challenges that many organizations are facing. Perhaps it's you know moving from a physical data center into a hybrid cloud. Maybe it's dealing with legacy content, legacy solutions, and being able to take uh, a legacy environment and migrate that to um, a virtualization um, platform or perhaps um, um, you know, public cloud. Lots of challenges that are related to that, especially if you're working with individual clouds like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Of course, Sunil, as we've seen over the last several years, everybody is working remotely. People are accessing from coffee shops, from home, and there are mobility concerns, mobility issues. There are um, organizations, manufacturing companies that have internet of things that are now connecting to the network. There's so much complexity. Um, in addition to that, how can you enable your workers to be productive and at the same time have the agility to roll out um, applications that will help that productivity? And, and so that becomes a challenge. And yet still many organizations are dealing with the realities of manual spreadsheets and manual tools. Um, what this does is it's, it, we drill into this. Um, we can see how some of these solutions specifically address things like high availability, resiliency, um, the compliance that you need for a hybrid environment. Um, it could be healthcare, it could be a highly regulated industry that, that you work in. Um, we have solutions for all of these things. Um, there's also the reality of um, really dealing with mobility. Mobility is huge in terms of um, dealing with multi-cloud and the visibility, the automation and control mm -hmm. that you need to actually connect with an, an ind individual devices and, and looking at those endpoints. So um, really this just kind of addresses some of the key challenges, Sunil, that we see across many different um, uh, verticals and many different types of organizations. Sounds good, Bob. So I see the what's new video over to the right. I don't want you to play the video, but can you talk to what's in that video? 
Yeah, absolutely. So this is about a little over 20 minutes of overview. Um, I, I had the opportunity to interview um, our director of product management, and we actually went through and looked at some of these key challenges that we're just talking about and how do core network service solutions value add and multi-cloud hybrid cloud integrations really solve some of those? And so what, what specifically is the capability and what does it do and how does it really impact the organization? And, um, you know, really what's in it for me? And so that's really what this video is about. It's, it's, it's a walkthrough of how some of these current challenges are being addressed um, through core network value add and, and our integrated solutions. Thanks, Bob. Uh, so go ahead and flip to the next page. So there's a whole list of benefits and business drivers. Uh, can you tell us about some of the key benefits and what cool features customers get? Yeah, I mean, um, this is so exciting, So no, and just really glad to share with folks. If you look at this, um, the business drivers that we try to focus on are things around cloud. Cloud is a huge area um, where folks are, are spending a lot of time these days. And specifically, um, we're looking at really two columns here. You see the green column, the multi-cloud integrations. This is really about how do we modernize the enterprise? How do we manage with orchestration? How do we manage with uh, automation? And so one of the big um, thoughts that, that you know, a lot of folks were dealing with is um, what about protocol services and specifically putting DHCP uh, in the, um, in the cloud. And, and so in this particular case, um, we have DHCP services that can be configured on virtual NIOS instances in Google Cloud Platform. So basically what this does is it puts um, services, um, makes those services available for on-prem clients. And, and why is this important? Well, for a lot of organizations that wanna shrink their uh, physical data centers, this enables decommissioning of physical data centers and it simplifies service migration um, to the cloud. And it really ensures DHCP service from a um, consistency perspective and overall it improves user experience. So these are some ways specifically that we're um, addressing, you know, how do you modernize to address some of these key issues? Another thing, Sunil, that we are looking at is, um, and, and along the same line, is, is reporting. Visibility is so important. And um, one of the things that we've been able to do is actually take solutions and put them up into AWS and Azure public clouds. And what that does is it gives you visibility about historic audit and compliance, um, real-time alerting, which is so important, um, network performance and capacity planning as well. And so this is really important to be able, again, to um, support the whole idea of decommissioning physical data centers. So just just uh, one of these things that, that folks have been looking at and, and they look at it from the standpoint of how do we go about actually doing these kinds of things. Another um, key thought here, Sunil, is the, the idea of um, load balancing. And specifically, um, some admins are dealing with sites that are flapping up and down. And it becomes really frustrating because it's like, okay, you gotta, you gotta manage that. It's flapping up and down. And so um, what you're able to do is actually bring that site down, fix it or look into it, investigate it, see what the issues are. And, and without having to restart your entire DNS, you can actually um, manage this and, and get human eyes on the situation before you just automatically pull it back up. We talk so much about automation these days, but there still is an important element of having um, human interaction to see in certain instances uh, what makes sense before uh, bringing something back up. And so once, once a, a site is stabilized and you can confirm that and validate it, then um, 
it, you can bring it back up. This is really important for disaster recovery, for example. And uh, again, it just goes to this whole notion of, of optimizing uptime, making sure that your site is completely reliable. So those are a few examples, um, Sunil. Another thing that we could talk about is um, the integration that we have with a whole variety of different um, uh, platforms. And one of the key values that there would be having DNS and IPAM uh, capabilities in VMware, for example, so that you can manage orchestration, your next available network. Um, you can import objects. You can do resource and data source support. Um, a lot of this information is available um, for Infoblox through GitHub. And so again, we make these um, solutions available. It's really exciting because a lot of the companies we work with Sunil include Ansible. Um, we have obviously Terraform we have noted here. Um, Nutanix is another one. Um, and, and so, you know, again, these things are really helpful. We also have support for external DNS, um, Kubernetes external DNS. And so, a lot of good value here um, to help automate and orchestrate and manage that great um, DNS, DHCP, IPAM data that is on your network and get that into uh, your platforms that you're using on a daily basis. Sounds good, Bob. Uh, why don't you go ahead and page to the, the next page? Yeah, so um, Sunil, one of the things that um, we like to do is we like to talk to folks about how um, other organizations have made, um, ha have dealt with some of these same problems. And um, this one in particular is a regional cancer research center. Um, all of this content, by the way, is available on infoblox.com. It's all cross-linked. And um, uh, this organization um, is, is a, a cancer research center. It's a hospital, it's a medical school, it's a pharmaceutical manufacturing organization. It's got a 110 acre main campus, 30 locations. Um, and one of their big problems was they wanted to separate primary and guest networks. They needed to support HIPAA compliance in more detail. And specifically, they wanted to reduce data privacy and security risk. And their primary focus, you know, the rise of, hot, of, of healthcare costs, um, everybody is having to deal with this. They wanted to save costs. They wanted to offload network overhead. They wanted to improve connected experiences for both their clinical and admin staff. But at the same time, there's many patients that are there and their families and their friends that are there supporting people that are going through cancer treatments. And they wanted to make sure that they had an excellent experience for both the clinical and admin staff, as well as the patients and guests. And so this story right here, you click into it, um, it actually uh, takes you right out to the Infoblox site and it's right here and it goes into more detail. You can actually see what kinds of um, uh, you know, results were there and you can actually download um, the, the lar larger story about, you know, how this um, cancer research hospital um, addressed some of these key issues around cost control, improvement of user experience, and offloading a lot of those costs by having a hybrid solution of NIOS um, along with uh, a cloud-managed solution on-prem and cloud-managed so that they could solve uh, some of their key uh, challenges there. Okay, Another one, um, Sunil, that's really interesting, and for for a lot of folks, you know, we're seeing mergers and acquisitions all over the place. Um, there's a story here about this global semiconductor uh, company, and they did a uh, an acquisition of another organization that was actually an APJ and Europe. And um, what was really interesting about this story is. Um, they were able to, within two days, quickly spin up an environment where they could see uh, the network uh, in both APJ and in EMEA. And they could get visibility, which was really critical because they had an, um, a need for a strategic um, acquisition and they needed to see all of this data. And uh, it was a Microsoft uh, 
uh, shop pretty much operation uh, that was um, being run by the, the organization that was being acquired. And what we were able to do is get in and within just a few days, spin up and see everything without even deploying an engineer to EMEA or APJ. It was outstanding. And mm -hmm. it took them 10 more months, Sunil, to kind of work through who's going to manage, what platforms are they going to use. And ultimately, when they saw um, the Infoblox solution, um, that really was a lock for them because they, they knew that they could be agile, they could be responsive, they could get the visibility that they were looking for and do it at a, in a very fast way in a very low cost. And, and so those were some things that really resonated with them. Very cool. Um, let's uh, go to the next page. So this uh, tally group feature um, with the 69% labor savings uh, estimate there, can you tell us a little bit about this tally report? Yeah, there's um, a, a third party analyst report um, uh, called the Tolly Group um, that we worked with. And uh, what you'll see actually here is a, an interview that I did with the president, Kevin Tolly. Um, but ultimately um, what we have here is um, the report that came out um, was one that focused on authoritative IPAM, um, IP address management, and specifically being able to do IP address discovery um, and getting that visibility in a variety of different clouds. So it could be AWS, it could be Azure, it could be Google Cloud Platform, for example. And to be able to do it through a single control plane so that you have one application that goes out and does all of this discovery and it pulls the data directly back into a single user interface. And that's very important because it automates that process. And so what we did when we were doing this report is we looked at the amount of time that it would take to actually go into an individual instance and identify a cloud IP resource. So in this diagram, it shows essentially that you would be in this data center and for each VPC, each VM instance, for each public cloud, you'd have to go in, discover that information, record it, put it down, for example, in a, in a spreadsheet, for example, and then you'd have to go on to the next one and on to the next one. And that becomes very onerous when you think about going into each individual instance and having to capture that information down and to repeat that process over and over again for each VPC of each data center of each cloud service, it can become, become like, it's too much work. Like you can, not only can you not keep up with that, but just the sheer cost. In fact, we, we timed it in the lab and we looked at it and it took, some, it took about a minute per IP address. And if you have a thousand IP addresses, that's like 16 and a half hours of time. And at, at, at the prevailing rates, it was like $1,300 in labor per refresh. I mean, it's it, not many IP addresses either. That's not many. Like how many organizations do you know that are going to have more than a thousand IP addresses? A lot, a lot. right? So, so this is a, a little bit of a story that tells us um, that there is substantial labor savings. And on top of this, there is substantial total cost of ownership and, and savings that you can get by automating your IP address management and drive those costs down versus free type solutions or open source type solutions that are out there. Going to an enterprise grade solution um, really saves you time and money and headaches and processing and rework and errors and all of these kinds of things that gets people on the same data so that the multiple teams can be doing um, uh, multiple different workflows with the latest up to speed, up to date information that's on the network. And that's what's so important. Yeah, no, that's great. So on this uh, resources pages uh, over to the right, uh, there are links to information about our cloud platform partners and links to solution notes and data sheets. Can you click on the view the NIOS 8.x portal and walk us through what's on that webpage? Sure. Um, so what you see here is a, a summary, uh, again, on infoblocks.com. Um, and, and this is basically just an overview of the latest um, 
you know, solution and how we solve. And, and we've talked about some of these things today, how we've solved um, some of the challenges that we talked about at the, at the start of our conversation. And um, this actually just um, scrolls down and talks about how do we get a modern hybrid uh, workplace? How do you strengthen your core network services platform? Um, how do you um, uh, take care of um, you know, the, the security needs that you have, the service provider needs? And what are some of the key capabilities that you're going to find? Um, we also have resources that are here. So this actually just takes you in and gives you an overview. Um, we, we also talk a moment ago about some of those um, customer stories. And, and you'll find those that are listed here. There's a bunch of these that are listed here as well, if you want to go in and get more information. So that's what you're going to see, actually, when you um, go into that, that portal. Okay, sounds good. And how can customers get access to this flipbook? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it is actually on that site that we were just at. Um, it's down here on the left-hand side, Modernize Your Enterprise. Um, and you can click on this and you can get your very own copy um, of this um, to review. Um, what's really powerful is that you can see um, things that are most important to you. You can drill down into them. And, and so, Neil, we have plenty of resources that are available, both in terms of how we solve um, different challenges through our solution notes, but also if you just want some basic information about, um, you know, a particular topic. Th these are all listed here as well. Um, you also have the ability to engage and get more information, potentially even start a, um, a trial if you want to do that. Um, and then for those that are in our partner marketplace, um, you have a link out here. This is actually in Microsoft. You can go to um, Azure Marketplace and see some of the latest offerings right here um, in, uh, in, in this marketplace uh, for, for this hypervisor. So um, very, very um, you know, uh, helpful information for those that are looking to solve challenges today. Thanks, Bob. So I got to tell you, I love the flipbook format. Um, has a ton of you know videos, links to more information, uh, all the key information about our uh, DNS, DHCP, and IP address management solution are all in one place. Uh, I think that's a great tool. So thank you so much for walking us through it. Yeah, Sunil, thanks so much for having me on. Um, you know, we we have some uh, additional. Um, resources that are available, of course, on the corporate website. Um, for those that are interested, uh, Sunil, I think we're going to make the uh, flipping book available for folks. Obviously, you could go out and and uh, you know connect with that directly off the the website. But um, uh, you know, certainly ways to follow up on that. Other resources as well. It's just so content rich. But again, our whole focus is how do we. Um, help solve some of these key challenges that many organizations are facing today. Infoblox has um, uh, some, some really forward thinking ways to do that, uh, whether you're deployed just on-prem, if you have a virtualization environment, or if you're um, you know, uh, specifically just in the cloud or some hybrid solution, um, you know, these are all things that Infoblox can certainly help you with. Absolutely. So I'll be posting this uh, video on the community website at community.infoblocks.com underneath the tech video section. And so uh, people can view it there and post comments and questions and we can get back to folks. So thanks again, Bob. And thanks everyone for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. All.